Hi there, in this video we are going to talk about Redux, how it works with React and why should we use it. Redux is an independent library for managing state of application. It can be used with React, Vue, Angular or any other Vue framework. Without Redux you would have to store the state of application in the state of some parent component, which is ok, but if you want to use that data in another component, you would have to use probs to deliver the data from parent component to child component. So in some cases you would have to make entire chain of props to deliver data. It gets even worse if a child component needs to update data in this state. In this case, inside of the parent component, you would have to create a function that handles its state and then pass that function down to the child component. So in fact, you end up with a chain of props of two things, data and a function to update the data, which of course is quite inefficient and complex. It would be great if independent components could have a direct connection to the state instead of having a chain of props between multiple components, right? That's where Redux comes handy, that's what it does. Redux helps you to store entire state of application in one super object. All the components connected to Redux have a direct access to the state and can directly update data in the state. This way we manage the state of application much more efficiently. Let me explain how a typical React Redux application works. As I said, we have the store. It stores entire state of application and React components get data from the store. So getting data from the store is quite straightforward, it's quite easy. We just need to connect React components to the state and simply get the data. But what happens if we need to update data in the state after some user interaction, for example? In the application we are building, we have, for example, this button, remove task button. What if the user clicked this button? How do we update the state? What we do is dispatch an action. An action is like an instruction of what should be done. Usually it looks like this. It has type, remove task in this case, and some payload. In this case ID 32. ID tells which task exactly should be removed. So we dispatch an action. What now? The dispatched action flows to so-called reducers. Now, to explain what reducers are, let me use a simple analogy. For a moment, imagine a book library. All the books in the library are sorted by sections, like art, science, history, and so on, right? Each section has a section administrator, a person responsible for managing books in his or her section. So, if a new book comes to the library, he or she knows where to store it, how to keep track of all the existing books in the section, and so on. Well, reducers have the same job. Each reducer is responsible for some independent section of state. Basically, reducers are functions that manage independent parts of state. So, in case of the application we build, let's say we have a reducer to manage tasks part of the state. Let's call it task reducer. What would it look like? It is a function that receives state and action. In other words, it receives current state and instructions of what should be done with the state. How should it be updated? Our reducer will have some initial state, some data to start with. In this case, it is going to be an array of objects and each object will represent a task in our application. So inside of this function, we need an if statement, which should return initial state if state is undefined. Using ES6 syntax, we could simply define state equals initial state, which means that if state is undefined, use initial state, which we define here. So now we have the state and we have instructions how to update the state. This reducer, which will handle tasks part of the state, 
will handle actions like add new task, remove task, or edit existing task. So what we need here is a simple switch with the following cases. Remove task, add task, edit task, and of course default. Switch receives type of action that has been dispatched and for each case it handles, it defines what to do, how to update the state. Default case of the switch is one that gets triggered if reducer does not handle received type of action. So if a dispatched action is for example remove task, this first case will be triggered and this is where we update the state by removing task with ID 32 from the array. But if dispatched action type is for example add team member which is not handled in this switch, it is a kind of action handled by another reducer, not task reducer. In this case, by default, we will return the same current state. In other words, the reducer will do nothing to update the state. It will just skip the action, so to say. So dispatched action flows to all the reducers. Then it gets recognized, so to say, by one of them. The reducer updates the state according to the instructions from dispatched action. And then the store provides updated state to React app, which re-renders the view of application. Okay, of course we still need to learn how to combine all the reducers, how to dispatch actions, how to update state in immutable way, and so on, but basically this is the typical React Redux workflow. In the next video we are going to install Redux package and use it in our application. See you there!